welcome to Built to Adapt at Spring One Platform 2017. My name is Kira Byrne and I'm talking to some of the top technology leaders from some of the largest and most iconic companies in the world about how they are transforming the way they build software. And we're also talking to analysts and practitioners. So we have two of them here with us today. Paul Fazone, who's the general manager of cloud native apps at VMware and James Waters, who's the Senior Vice President of Strategy at Pivotal. So welcome to both of you. Thanks for having us. Great to be here. So in your uh, keynote earlier on, yeah. uh, one of the things that you said on stage is write code, not tickets. So can you tell us a bit more about that? Sure, well, you know, I spent um, a big chunk of my career on the networking side of the house. And um, oftentimes when the, in our customers, their lines of business bring out new applications or make changes to their existing applications, they want one more hole opened in the firewall or, or one more point of network connectivity established. Um, and it's usually, a, uh, unfortunately for the development teams, it's usually a pretty painful and grueling process because there's a lot of manual interaction required on the networking side. And so we referred to this this morning as um, the, the email ticketing system. Somebody sends an email and says, hey, I need to, I, I, this application needs to talk to this service. Email defined networking. Right. <laughs> email defined networking, yeah. right. Um, and so, uh, what we're, you know, one of the things we started to, to, to tackle, which is, I think, slowing down a lot of uh, enterprise developers today, is the automation of the network connectivity and security policies that go along with it. So when an application developer wants to push an update to an app or a new app in general, and it complies to existing enterprise network uh, policy, it can automatically be configured on the fly, right? Removing that human friction and that slows things down. And actually, VMware and Pivotal have collaborated as well on uh, Pivotal Container Services. So for people in the audience who maybe don't know what that is, so can you give us a summary? Sure. Uh, Pivotal Container Service is a shared uh, product between Pivotal and VMware um, that allows people to consume Kubernetes without having to manually stand it up and manually operate it themselves. Like, uh, the idea is to deliver a container dial tone uh, based on largely on the vSphere APIs uh, through the Cloud Foundry Bosch uh, known provisioning system. Um, and the key is you really just like we talked about with networking here is like, hey, I want a container API, go. Uh, and take away all of that bespoke artisanal approach to creating environments and maintaining environments, including Kubernetes itself. Um, in the cloud environments today, they offer Kubernetes as a service, but private cloud really didn't have um, that sense of just consuming a container API. So it was difficult to use in production without doing a lot of DIY kind there's, of stuff. There's a lot of DIY, and then it was super important to have VMware, which really runs the majority of private infrastructure in the world as the critical partner, and, and Paul's team has been the, a huge contributor and um, shares, shares in that product. So tell us a bit, Paul, about uh, VMware's contributions to this on the technology side. Well, one of the things that James hit on was that a lot of customers as they were getting started with uh, container solutions were focused, uh, basically had to build it themselves. Yeah. And so you had um, operations teams piecemealing together bespoke solutions that ended up requiring a lot of um, internal operational resources to just to keep the lights on. And so what we started to hear more and more from customers was around that they wanted to be focused on running the platforms, not building them, right? They wanted to be platform operators, not platform builders. Yep. And so we really honed in on that and we said, okay, um, Pivotal had started uh, working with the Google Cloud team, had started on the Kubo project, which was an open source uh, project to bring Kubernetes and Bosch together. Um, and we started to look at that and said, okay, well, how can we now take this and provide an integration layer for Kubo um, and uh, to make this easy to deploy and operate in a, in a vSphere environment, which is where a lot of the virtualized workloads that are in production today run on-prem, um, but make, uh, make uh, getting access to a Kubernetes cluster for an enterprise developer as easy as it was to get access to a, a virtual machine. And so that's really where we've been focusing our attention. Um, and as part of that, um, uh, VMware um, over the last few years has gotten more and more uh, actively involved in the networking space with our NSX product. Um, and in a, uh, in a container-based application, there are a lot of moving parts. The application is effectively using the network to, as its backplane to, to allow the microservices to actually communicate. And so with our NSX contribution to the, to the project, we're bringing a you know, effectively state-of-the-art modern networking and security solution um, that is API-driven and uh, effectively fully automated based on the, the needs of the containerized application that's being deployed. 
And why is um, secure networking a particular problem when you're using containers? Well, I think security is a problem regardless of the application. And so if we can provide, and, and oftentimes in, in the, as, as we hear more and more about security breaches in our enterprise uh, customers, oftentimes those breaches can be traced back to these two things, right? Humans make mistakes. Humans forget to patch. Humans forget to update. And so Pivotal's done a really good job uh, of providing uh, kind of a, a paradigm shift on the patching and update side of the house. Yep. Um, and VMware with NSX has provided a paradigm shift in terms of, of how we provide very discrete uh, connectivity, allowing discrete connectivity between application elements and securing those connection points in a API driven automated way. So bringing together the, the best of those two worlds, I think will fundamentally allow our customers to realize a whole new um, uh, playing field in, in securing their environments and hopefully tip the advantage to the, the customers and away from the bad guys. So actually what kind of customers do you think will want to use PKS as opposed to PCF? And you know some customers will use both, but... Um... Yeah, we, we laid out a set of use cases here. Basically, the, the key to these cloud fabrics, if you will, is that you fit the right use case and workload to the right ab abstraction. And uh, when we really started off in this journey in two 2010 and 2011, we had the application abstraction and then a virtual machine. And that was enough to get most of your work done. You're like, hey, I need a VM to run my database and I'll run my app in the application service. And the container ecosystem has really kind of come in and built a middle tier between those two abstractions where if you want to do something like a Cassandra or a Spark or Elasticsearch that comes as a container and is a distributed data service, it's very effective and efficient to run that using Kubernetes commands. Okay. You, you probably wouldn't want to have your digital team deploying, continuously delivering their uh, next generation application in that same fashion, because it's a little more burdensome to lower the abstraction level from the application service. Yeah. And so we see this as rounding out the uh, utility between what is an application service and what's a full coarse grain VM. And, and there's a lot of emerging use cases there. And the thing I'd say is that if you look at Amazon Web Services, they go the whole way from bare metal to Lambda now. And so it's not even unique to Pivotal and this collaboration is sort of the multi-abstraction approach to cloud is largely the pattern for, for everyone. I, well, I wait, actually asked a major financial customer this exact question. I said, you know, two, three years from now, which of these services do you want to be offering your developers in-house? Which ones do you think you'll have running in-house? And they just looked at and they said, all of them. Yeah. And I said, well then, mm -hmm. you know, when because a lot of our conversations with customers today are about um, the the shiny new thing, right? There's always there was a first a race to containers, and then there was a race to service mesh, and then a race to function. So it's con the, the, that world's constantly evolving, and the communities that that are supporting those projects like to to look at what's next, you know, very very regularly. Our enterprise customers don't have the luxury of of moving quite that fast, but it, they also have the requirement to support. A, a pretty diverse group of developers all doing different things for different lines of business. Different types their, of workloads. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And so I think the, you asked the question, say, is it you know, X or Y? Is mm. it, it going to be uh, PCF or PKS? Um, I think it's an and, right? It's going to be, there's these different abstractions, as James pointed out, um, where, the, where I think you want to have them unified is on the operational model. Yeah on the infrastructure model, and on the networking security storage policies. Um, those are going to be consistent for an enterprise organization because their, their business policy dictates a lot of those parts. But to the development teams that are trying to service a wide range of internal and external customer demands for their business, you want to make a wide range of tools available so they can deliver the, the best service uh, possible. And this isn't the first time this has happened. Like if you look inside an operating system, there's different syscalls. It's not like everything is the exact same function inside of an operating system. So we're really building the distributed operating system for cloud computing. And it's, you know, that's now you're going to have pivotal function services as well added that, to that That's mix. it. So it's in the same way an operating system has different ways, if you're an app, of consuming resources and different calls you can make. I, I see that the same thing happening with our broader cloud fabrics today. And it's, this is the first time they're really building you know, distributed fabrics for mass consumption um, in enterprise accounts. So. It's following a familiar pattern though.
We talked to an analyst from Red Monk yesterday, actually, about containers and virtual machines. And he said one of the dangers with containers in enterprises was that they're viewed as a replacement or an upgrade for virtual machines, which misses the point. So have you seen that with your customers? And like, how do you get over that perception? We, we have seen it quite a bit. Um, I, uh, I, you know, it comes back to what's the right tool for the job and oftentimes the people who take those, or the, the customers I see who, who've taken the, that position, at least uh, initially, aren't actually the ones writing the applications. Okay. Um, so basically what we try to do is connect the dots between those individuals back to the development teams who are responsible for selecting the right tool for the right job, and then give them a constant, uh, consistent approach to deploying those services so that they don't have to reinvent. One of the things that customers got I started to see customers get nervous about um, in the container space. As an example, was um, there was a you know there was a project specific to storage and a project specific to networking and a project specific to to security and visibility, and customers started getting nervous that they were going to have to reinvent the wheel for those baseline infrastructure services all over again, just because the abstraction changed. And what. VMware offers is a way to have a consistent set of these services regardless of the abstraction. I think as those parts start to click together, remembering we're still in the early days of real enterprise adoption of these technologies. Um, you know, Kubernetes as an example is, you know, we're not even really through the first inning of enterprise production deployments of that. And so I expect there's going to be a, a you know, a, a pretty long run of that in, uh, in our customers' environments, but we're just starting to scratch the surface. And, and I would say like even Google Container Engine, you provision it inside of virtual machines. Um, Azure Container Instances, we suspect, are just instances running in Hyper-V. So if you look at the dominant designs of how people are actually manifesting container processes, they're still using the provisioning leverage and the security leverage of virtual machines okay, yeah. to manifest them. And that's what sometimes the hype when you do the verses, it's like you don't understand that it's, it's a layered technology. Um, in the same way that you took the typewriter from, you know, keyboard from a typewriter and you put it on a computer, then you put it on an iPhone. Some of these things stay with you. And I think the virtual machine is one of those enduring patterns that we continue to build layered technologies on top of. And if you think about the hypervisor underneath, vSphere in the case of VMware's offering, that's become kind of the new baseline data center uh, um, operating system or even lower level BIOS in a sense because yeah. it, it allows, like if customers start to talk about bare metal, I, I, I start talking them through all the work that companies like um, uh, Intel and Dell uh, and VMware do together to make sure that day one, when a new version of the of VSX comes out, their server hardware is supported, right? The NIC drivers, the storage drivers, people forget about all the pains that they had to go through and live through as server technology evolved, and it's still evolving very rapidly, um, when dealing with quote unquote bare metal. Um, the hypervisor, it's not, it's not sexy or, or you know, interesting to, for, for people to, to, to get excited about um, as a value add, but it's providing a tremendous amount of enterprise um, efficiency, allowing them to have choice in server hardware, allowing them to change generations of servers as they, as they progress, um, and VMware owns that problem for them. And so that basic function of the hypervisor, I think, is a huge value add, um, and our our scheduling mechanisms in the hypervisor itself. Um, you know, we've got uh, many tests uh, in house that we that we do. The 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 performance implications of bare metal containers versus running in a vSphere environment um, are negligible. And so we've got you know a lot of different parameters of these tests that we do to to demonstrate this um, with science, with 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 hard math. Um, and so I you know I welcome those discussions from customers because I think we have the, the data that points to the fact that you're if you look at the, the big picture um, from operations to hardware choice to performance um, running with something like vSphere at the base uh, covers a, a lot of bases for, for our enterprise uh, customers. So actually do you think that PKS can help operations to upskill by getting them away from having a bespoke environment for, for every app? Yeah, I think the overall fabric will. I think one of the great things that, you know, I think you interviewed Greg Otto uh, did. from Comcast, and the simple fact is his team is currently two dedicated operations people running 20,000 app containers. Uh, they're up to six now. 
They are. <laughs> they are. He told I, us I, that. I know that well, but in his presentation of it, he'll say that four of those are enablement, helping people on board. Oh, okay, fair and enough. And two are dedicated to actually keeping the lights on on the platform. That's true. He did say they spent 80% of their time now working directly with app developers that, rather right. than running the platform. So when you look at that operational paradigm, and the security paradigm that Greg has where he can apply patches within 48 hours, that's going to change every enterprise's operating model. Like it's just a matter of time. Now we're up to a critical mass of nearly 3,000 people in our keynotes watching this. Yeah. Um, 70,000 people online you know, tuned in. This is reaching critical mass. This is a new operating model for apps and containers. And I do think it will it'll have broad impacts, and that's why it was so important to incorporate NSX into it, so that all of the network automation can come along with that new model versus staying in the old world. So I, I do believe it's a, a revolution is a big word, but it, when you look at the metrics that are coming out of the change, they're, they're not evolutionary, they're, they're radical departures. So what are your bigger, biggest ambitions for PKS, let's say in the next year or two? Good, uh, good question. Um, from the VMware side, um, we want to help customers not have to make an, uh, an or decision. So very simply put, um, vSphere as this ubiquitous platform in all, uh, you know, in, uh, in hundreds of thousands of customers, uh, data center environments, um, we want to enable the IT teams and the operations teams to give their developers choice, but in a consistent infrastructure way. And so we're looking at how we bring PKS and vSphere closer together as, as an example. Um, we're looking at how we, um, uh, now that we've got uh, initial availability of PKS, um, we're looking at the other products in the VMware uh, support and operations portfolio like um, Wavefront for APM uh, or VR Ops for just kind of overall data center operations and visibility. How we uh, integrate and enhance those products so that they are able to support um, a wide variety of virtualized workloads, VMs or containers or in the, as uh, um, uh, uh, Pivotal uh, Functions comes to market, yeah. the, the function service as well. Um, customers shouldn't be able to use the workload abstraction of their choice for the job at hand. We want to be able to support and operationalize around all of them. Makes sense. Paul, do you have anything, or sorry, <laughs> James, do you have anything to add to that? I, I, the only thing I know is I think it's going to be a huge hit with ISVs. I think as we make a container interface available everywhere and everywhere you find vSphere, I think ISVs are going to be able to ship whole images, Docker images and Kubernetes manifests. Um, and I think the ISV ecosystem is going to be really enamored with PKS. And I think that's really going to help people stand up third-party applications very rapidly. Uh, so I, I think that's going to start to seep into it. I'm just starting to hear more and more ISVs saying we want to support a Kubernetes-like interface. And I think PKS will be number one in that. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And thanks to everybody for watching. <laughs>